It says that a company makes two types of computers, X and Y. The company can make a total of 80 computers per day and it has 240 work hours available per day. It takes two work hours to make computer X and six work hours to make computer Y. The profit on computer X is $80 and the profit on computer Y is $120. How many of each should be made to maximize the profit? Okay, so it seems like there's a lot going on in this problem, and there usually is when you're talking about these linear programming uh, type problems. But what I recommend doing is just kind of read it through quickly first, and then go to that last sentence. Okay, that's what we're trying to optimize. You're either trying to maximize something or minimize something. And what I would do is write that equation first, because that'll tell us what our variables are, and that'll uh, help to kind of frame the problem a little bit for us. So how many of each should be made to maximize profit? So let's see, what's an equation for the profit? Well, profit equals $80 times the amount that's made on computer X, okay, plus $120, which is made on computer Y. So if we can figure out how many of X and Y type computers we should make, that'll be the profit, right? Okay, now what we wanna do is we wanna work with the constraints, okay, the, the constrictions, the, the restrictions, right? So it says you can only make a total of 80 computers per day. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that uh, X plus Y, okay, the two types of computers, you can make less than or equal to 80. Okay, right? Okay, what other restrictions are there? It only has 240 work hours available. Okay, so that means you can't work more than 240 work hours. It has to be less than or equal to 240 work hours. And let's see, it takes uh, two work hours to make computer X, so that's 2X. It takes six work hours to make computer Y, so that's 6Y is less than or equal to 240. Now, something that's not always written in the problem itself is the fact that you can't really make a negative number of computers, so we have to assume that uh, x is greater than or equal to zero. Can't make a negative uh, number of computers, right? And same thing with y. y is greater than or equal to zero. So these are our constraints, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna graph this now, and we're gonna look at the uh, region, okay, the feasible region that, that satisfies all these constraints. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's go ahead and graph that. Okay, so what we have here is here's x, here's y, now, what you want to do when you graph these is you want to kind of pay attention to maybe what the x-intercepts and y-intercepts are. So it looks like here you're going to look at uh, 80. It looks like here it could be like maybe 40 and 120. And let's see. So it looks like maybe we should count by like 20s. All right, so let's do that. So we've got 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Same thing here, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 120. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set x to zero, so y is 80. Okay, so 20, 40, 60, 80 right there. And let's see, if uh, y is zero, then x is 80. Okay, good, and so if we graph our line, it's gonna look something like this. And this is an inequality, you see how it's less than or equal to 80. If we do a test point like zero, zero, so we put zero in for x and zero in for y. So zero is gonna be less than or equal to 80. So that means that where this point is here, that's the true region. So we wanna shade in this region right here, okay? All right. Now the next one, it says 2x plus 6y is less than or equal to 240. So if we set x to zero, zero times anything is zero, divide by six, you can see our y-intercept is going to be 40. So that's 20, 40, so that's right there. If we set y to zero, zero times six is zero. So that's why I'm covering that up. So then if we divide by two, you can see x is gonna be 120, so that's gonna put us right over here. And if we draw that line, it looks something like that, right? And again, if we do a test point like zero, zero, is zero less than or equal to 240? Yes, that's true, so that means that where this test point is, the origin is gonna be on the true side of the, the line. So we're going to, that's gonna put us right here, okay? Okay, so so far you can see that we're in this overlapping region. Now, we also have to take into account that x is greater than or equal to zero, okay, so that means we're to the right of the y-axis, and y has to be greater than or equal to zero, which means we're above the y-axis. So you can see that all these regions, all these inequalities are overlapping right here in the first quadrant, okay? Now, the next thing you wanna do is you wanna look at the vertices or the corners of this polygon that's formed, this region, and you can see there's a point here, there's a corner, there's a vertex there, there's the origin, and there's there. So what we wanna do is we wanna find the location of these points. Some of these we already know, like this point here is uh, 80 comma zero. This point here is zero comma 40, right? 
but this point here is not so easy to, to locate, okay? It might be 60-20, but what we'll have to do is we'll have to take the two uh, equations here of those lines, just treat them like equations, and we'll have to solve that system to find out where they intersect. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm just gonna write those over here, and I'm just gonna treat them like equations. So we have x plus y equals 80, right? And we've got 2x plus 6y equals 240. Now I'm gonna multiply this top equation by negative two, Okay, and I'm gonna write it down here. So that's negative 2x minus 2y equals negative 160. If we add these together, we get 4y equals 80, right? So that means that if we divide by four, y equals 20. And if we put 20 back in for y here, you can see that x is gonna be 60. All right, so it looks like this point here is gonna be 60 comma 20. All right, so now we've got the vertices or the corners of this feasible region, okay, this polygon here that's formed of the overlapping inequalities. And we wanna test these in our profit equation because we're trying to maximize profit. Now, sometimes you're trying to minimize something like cost, and then you would plug in these points and see which is gonna give you the minimum. But here we're trying to maximize, so let's go ahead and plug in 0, 40. So I put in zero for x and 40 for y. What does that come out to? Well, we have 120 times 40, 4,800. So at this point, I'm just gonna write profit equals 4,800, okay? That's for this point right here. Now let's go over to 80, zero. So 80, zero would be 80 times 80, which is what, 6,400 plus zero. So this point is gonna be uh, 6,400. Okay, and then we're gonna check the 60, 20 point. So 60 times 80 is what, 4,800 plus 20, that's gonna be 2,400, right? So that's gonna give us a total of how much? 70, uh, 7,200, right? So this point is 7,200. So it looks like if we wanna maximize our profit here and still stay within our restrictions or our constraints, we're gonna to wanna to produce 60 of computer X and 20 uh, computer Ys, right? And that's gonna give you a maximum profit of 7,200, and again, staying within the, the constraints. So. A lot of work involved with these linear programming problems, but I think the key, in my opinion, is to just read it through quickly. Usually go to that last sentence, trying to figure out what you're trying to uh, maximize or minimize. Write that equation first. That'll tell you what your variables are. Then you can write all your other constraint equations in terms of those, you know, those variables. Then go ha and graph the region, okay? Find out the overlapping region. And then what you wanna do is look at the vertices or the corners. Those are the points that you're gonna wanna test in your uh, function that you're trying to maximize or minimize, in this case it was profit, and then whichever one gives you the largest or the least, depending on what you're trying to do, that's gonna be what you're gonna wanna aim for. So, and that's the, gonna be your solution. So, I hope this helped you understand how to work with linear programming problems better. Subscribe to the channel, check out more math tutoring videos on my YouTube channel, Myra's Math Tutoring, and I look forward to helping you in the future videos. I'll talk to you soon.